And you putting punches right in their faces and real nice control and no contact. My question is, I know you came out of the full contact ring, a very serious fighting, realistic context. Did you have some difficulties? Was it an adjustment to go from hitting someone as hard as you can to staging a fight on a film? There's quite a bit of difference. Actually, control sort of works across the board. Mm -hmm. For example, in the clip we just saw, uh, the director of the film asked me to throw a real fast punch and stop it right on the kid's nose, to throw a real right. fast side kick and stop it right on the kid's nose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're in certain types of competition, you're not supposed to put the, the full amount of weight behind the technique. That's what they call leverage, the thing mm -hmm. that gives you the, the power and the, and the force of blow that does mm -hmm. the damage. Mm -hmm. Light contact. That's right. light contact mm -hmm. tournament competition. So that means sometimes you have to fire kick or fire punch and pull it within a certain distance or mm -hmm. within a certain uh, contact range. Right. Now, when you go into doing film work, it's even you got to pull it even more so. Sure. Uh, for example, if the camera's facing me in this direction and the person's firing a punch at me from over here, he's got to bring that punch or that kick from outside across the frame oh, of the okay. camera to, make it, to create mm -hmm. the illusion that I'm being here. Right. And then the person who's receiving the punch or kick on camera, they usually tell them to use the, use the eyes to follow the punch or the kick like that. So you sort of... Oh, Almost as if it's I'm. A timing thing. It's sort of a timing thing mm -hmm. where it, it creates the illusion that I'm being here, that a person is right, being here. Right. Uh, there's a big difference though between the full contact material that you see sure, and sure. what you see in films. Films they spend a quite a bit of time doing the aerial kicks and then things right. that have well, an aesthetic appeal to it. I know you train, of course, very very hard for a full contact match, a major bout, and so forth, a championship fight. How about for the movies? Was it important that you maintained a good training regimen to keep the body and the mind engaged? You know, to be honest with you, not really. <laughs> <laughs> My first film that I did, uh, Jaguar Lives, back in 19, I think it was 78, we shot it over in Spain, right. most of Europe. Christopher Lee was in there. I spent an entire year running six miles every single day, every single night. And then uh, on my alternate day, nights, I would go down to karate class and work out and mm -hmm. go lift weights and all this stuff, where I should have been spending that time on my acting lessons. Oh, so, I see. So it's but, a different kind of training. Yeah, it's... It's kind of strange where you put your priorities. Like mm -hmm. if you watch some of the old Bruce Lee films, right. well, in my opinion, he couldn't act. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he's a fantastic martial artist. Very exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. A lot of presence. So it's a, it's just a matter of what are your priorities. Do you mm -hmm. want to concentrate on your acting? Do you want to concentrate on your karate uh, fight scenes? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do something spectacular, or do you want to just be doubled, or by a, a stuntman have yeah. a stuntman come in and mm -hmm. do your stuff right. for you? Now. <clears throat> You've been involved in acting in Hollywood for some time. What are some of the other television and motion picture credits projects well, you've been involved in? I've probably done probably a total maybe 100 TV shows. Uh, I did start in a couple of films, Jaguar Lives, mm -hmm. Force 5. Right. As a matter of fact, one of the last things I did was um, I played myself on this TV show called The Fall Guy with Lee Majors sure. and Douglas Barr. Mm -hmm. The uh, director asked me to come in, the producer of the show actually you asked me to yourself. come in. You yourself and play myself and we decide what I should do is we we're going to take Douglas Barr and I was going to teach him how to throw a sidekick. Now what's his role in the movies? He, I understand he's the... He was, uh, he was a sidekick. He was um, I guess his comrade, his mm -hmm. uh, co-host, right. whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Co-star. Mm -hmm. And see when I was in Okinawa I had an instructor named Kinjo Chinsaku and Kinjo was jumped one time by five people. He used only a sidekick to defend himself. He killed one of the five people with a sidekick. He put two of the other f remaining four in the hospital and the other two got away. Oh, they wow. put him in prison. Of course in Okinawa you can petition to get somebody out of jail. Hmm. And that's how he got. So long time ago I knew that sidekick was a pretty deadly technique. Very deadly. As a matter of fact it's the same one I chose to use uh, on the fall guy. Mm -hmm. and so since, in my opinion, it is by far the strongest technique, the safest, the deadliest, the most effective, let's bring in our uh, assistants here now and show the people at home an idea about how you can develop this, first of all, on a beginning level. So okay. a simple exercise. The mechanics of sidekick. And then, you know, time permitting, let's try mm -hmm. to develop it a little further and go into showing you a more realistic application sure. of it. Great. All right, the sidekick. Okay. Now. 
I want everybody positioned facing this direction. Now, a side kick means basically we're kicking to the side of the body and we're hitting primarily with the side of the foot or the bottom of the foot. Now, very simply, all we're going to do is go through it a very simple beginning way. We're going to fold the knee like so. Hold on a second. We're going to point this foot towards your point. Then from here, we're going to extend the leg out straight. And as you complete the extension, we're going to pivot into it. Pull the leg back and then put it down. Now try this in slow motion. Sometimes you might use someone as a guide to keep your balance, or you might use the back of a chair to sort of keep your balance. Those of you who do have good balance, you want to try this. It's an excellent exercise. All right, position. Now watch. The count of one. Fold your knee up. Now as you lift that knee up, let your shin bone sort of face your opponent. You see there, I'm already losing my balance. You two are supposed to fall off. Now from here, let's extend the leg out straight. And as you extend the leg out straight, pivot on the base leg. That locks the kick in. Now pull it back and put it down. Now relax. Get your balance again. Now let's try that again. Count of one, fold the knee. Count of two, extend the leg out straight. Count of three, pivot it, lock it out, pull it back, put it back down. Now let's try that one more time. Up the count of one. Notice as they're lifting the leg, they're pointing the shin bone towards the opponent. Don't lift the knee any higher, then it's easy for you to maintain your balance. Count of two, straighten the leg out straight. Count of three, pivot in to put the power in the kick, recoil it. Put it back down. Now let's try to put all those movements together into one simple sequence on my command at about half speed. Okay, ready? All right, kick all the way up and out and back. Everybody see how that was done? Let's try it again about half speed. Ready? Kick. Reposition. Now let's try to go up to full speed a couple times and see how it looks. All right, ready? Kick. Does everybody see the power in that? Imagine getting hit on the rib cage with a technique like that. Or somewhere here where you get like a concussive blow across the lower abdominal region. Or if you want to drop it below the belt, if a man's coming at you or something, you want to drive it in kind of low. Or if you want to, you can bring it down on the person's kneecap or down across the shin bone. Sometimes if a person's just standing there, you can fire it and hit them on the arm or spin them around and hit them in the center of the back. Any part of the body you hit with that particular kick, it's going to hurt. Now let's try it a couple more times so that people can see a feel of what the power looks like visually. Ready? Kick! Reposition. Again. Kick! One more time. Watch it closely. Ready? Now, that's looking really good. Now, let's take it a step further. As you see now, this is how you would basically start developing a kick on a beginning level. And subsequently, you would want to take this technique and start applying it in a more realistic context. All right, for example, let me use you over here, Di. Position against me. Now watch. Imagine this is my opponent in a realistic situation or in competition. The hardest thing to do in the fight game or in a street situation is to close that gap between me and my opponent without missing or getting hit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a more advanced application of this kick. Watch it. We're going to take what we call an initial step. Then we're going to step behind and see how fast you can fold your leg and then actually fire the kick. The most important step is trying to get the jump on your opponent. All right, now my two assistants, let's position over here facing this direction, please. All right, both of you on the same side, please. Facing this direction. Now, let's go through it slow motion. Step one, take that initial step with the front leg. Step two, see how fast you can fold your leg up. Then step three, fire the kick. Now, back reposition. See, we've broken the kick down into three steps. Now, let's take the most important step in fighting, which is... I want to see how fast you can take that first initial step and then just cock your hip. Do not fire the kick. All right, on my command. Ready? Eight. Back reposition. What they're doing now is the most important step in fighting so far as firing any kick in the book. Now, again, 